perspective is called creating art with CSS. So um, there's this other thing uh, that I'm, I'm helping out with this month. It's, it's a, I would say it's a group uh, initiative called Coding Girls. So they're doing this thing called 30 Days of uh, CSS. And uh, one of the first things they, 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 they had to do like on day one was create a, a hut with pure CSS. And turns out that to create a hut with pure CSS, the line, they're not, it's not a lot of lines, like maybe 20 lines, right? But if you're someone who's completely new to CSS, it's like nonsense. Like, what's this, what, what, what's this transform? Then what's this pseudo element? Why you got two, two double colons? All this nonsense. Uh, it, it, it's some of the things that I, I took for granted because like you, you use, use it in your daily life, then you don't think. Then if for someone who is new to this, you're like, this is ridiculous. I'm out. And then just walk away. So cannot, cannot. We must, we must try to like explain. But uh, the, the point here is that creating out with CSS, right, you, you can boil it down to it's as if you are creating a vector image on the screen. So what CSS gives us is um, a number, there are a number of properties, not a lot. I think about four or five are covered today. Once you combine, right, you can pretty much do anything. Later, then maybe we we'll, like, there, there, there were a few really, really amazing like code pen art going along, going around like in February, later, later show, later show. Today, we will boil it down to the basics. So, oh, oh, yeah, okay, I must talk about myself. This is me, and that's me in emojis. Moving on. Uh, oh, Hui Jing has a, has a day job. Uh, somebody is paying my CBF. Uh, I work for a company called Nexmo. Uh, Nexmo provides stickers. Actually, we do communications API. So if your app needs to do like SMS or voice or whatever nonsense, right? Yeah, can use our APIs. I'm sure that's not how I'm supposed to introduce my company, but hashtag, haven't fired me yet. Um, so... The introduction to this whole thing is there's a, there's a musician, he's called Taiko. Uh, his music is like got no lyrics one, so it's quite good like if you're working and then no, no words, then can just listen. It's a bit electronic. But what's nice about his album covers, like some of it, like he has some other more artistic album covers. But out of his uh, discography, he has like four albums, right? If you look, the album covers are just geometric shapes, okay? And these geometric shapes, right? can be recreated in pure CSS. So this uh, set of slides is HTML, CSS. Ma. Later when I share the, the link, you all can just go into it, inspect element, like, oh, uh, it's not showing up. Hang on, move over. Yeah, so it, it's CSS, uh, it's CSS. Well, I'll explain how this, how this becomes this. So this is um, an example of what is possible with just CSS, can, can do until like that, yeah. So first things first, Shapes, shapes are very important. Uh, if you can draw shapes, uh, you can draw anything. So first of all, this be a circle. Uh, to create this circle, you only need five lines. And the key line is border radius. Border radius, 50%. Um, so everything, okay, this, this is, even this is not necessary. This is just to make it centered. But yeah, border radius, 50% can create a circle. Point number one. Point number two, you can create triangles with CSS. And how this actually works, right? Because usually you can, you, most of us will just go and Google oh, CSS triangle, copy and paste. But how it really works, right, is this is just a normal div with, I made a border like super thick. And then I gave each border different color. So you can see, uh, when you, when we, usually when we do a border property, we usually set like one value. So everything is, um, how to say, even. But border, is a shorthand for all, all four sides. So if you set each of the four sides individually, right, where the borders meet is actually a diagonal. So if your div, right, got borders but don't have a uh, height and width, okay, could become like that, right? So if you, if you don't want to do all four, right, you just do one side, you get triangle already. So, ta -da, get triangle. So the code here, right, for this particular case, the top and bottom is the, the top triangle and the bottom triangle transparent. Then the left side got color can now. And then based on how you want it, if you want it, uh, this is facing that side. Regardless of where you want it to face, you just adjust which borders you want to use. So that's, that's, that's the trick behind the so-called border triangle CSS trick, whatever you want to call it. So now you can create circle and you create triangle. Okay, another very good shape for creating art is Trapezium. Ah, trapezium can do a lot of things. Actually, I created a trapezium because the album got like this triangle trapezium thing. And um, trapezium must a bit play cheat. How to say? Because uh, technically, it's not really a trapezium. It's actually a rectangle. Then you chop off on the two ends using clip path. 
So click path is one of those properties that if you notice it's, a, it's, it's like a mathematical function. So it's a, it's a polygon function and each of these values is x, y coordinate, x, y coordinate, x, y coordinate. So what happens is that it's uh, first value x, uh, second value y. So it tells, it tells the browser the shape that you want to click. So every div is a rectangular box. This shape tells the browser like you clip off based on this polygonal shape. Um, yeah, uh, sad part is that not supported in H or IE. So if you're using H or IE, then you see a, a rectangle. You can ask your you, you can ask your audience to like, oh, imagine, just imagine that it got clicked. No lah, but uh, so that, that's a that's a that's a slight limitation. But now that you have the ability to create uh, these three shapes, you have quite a decent starting toolbox to go with. Next, ah, pseudo elements. So Ted talked about this, about how he used it for his custom checkboxes. Pseudo elements are good um, if you don't want to make your so-called artistic creation, like a lot of divs. So you can sort of get away with like two less divs because the pseudo elements each of them can become like one div that you can play with and shape. Uh, the thing about pseudo elements is that, say your, your uh, original div using is dot element, right? The pseudo element before and after will be children. There will be children within the, the parent element. Uh, the key line is that you must set content. Empty string also can, but you must have this property. Uh, otherwise, the browser is not going to render this pseudo element. I think officially, according to the spec, right, uh, pseudo elements are used to sort of access content that is not, that is not existent in the source. So basically, a pseudo element, right, if you go and right click inspect element, uh, or if you look at the source, you go and view source, right, it's not there one. It's, gen it's called generated content. And uh, in order for generated content to be sort of, um, you can, to make it manipulatable, right, you must have this uh, content property. So that, this, is the, this is the key line. Do I have? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. At least have any codes. Not with, okay, yeah. So one thing to note is that it's not in the source. So that means if you have like legit uh, informative content, right, don't put it here. Because people who use screen readers, uh, they, they cannot access. The, the content, the screen readers will read from uh, HTML source. Any generated content won't show up. So you can use it decoratively, no problem, but try not to, not, not try. Definitely don't put any important informative um, content as a pseudo element. It's just not, not good, not good. So that's pseudo elements. Gradients, they also mentioned gradients. Uh, gradients can do a lot of magic things, um, but the syntax for gradients can be a bit uh, confusing. If any of you, and I believe, I think only Chion was there, there was this one particular CSS meetup which clearly only six people show up because I changed the menu at the last minute. Yes, yes, I do this kind of thing. Uh, I explained how to read this uh, CSS syntax definitions. Yeah, there's, there's video evidence of that happening. You can go and scroll through the archives. I think it happened two years ago. But basically, this is how uh, CSS specifications are written in, in the spec. Among all the words, right, they will explain to you, this is the syntax that they use to define uh, the property itself. So it looks, it, it looks a bit complicated, but basically, when you use a linear gradient, it's a function. It's a function. And then each of these notations uh, got meaning, got meaning one, but I'm not going to go through, right? So basically, this means, the, the angle brackets means uh, it, it's like a set, so it's like either or. This single one means can only have one, so either you angle or you use side or corner. Uh, the question mark means optional. And then the, the angle bracket just is a representation of a list. So color stop list actually means <laughs> color stop. And then this means two or more. So minimum two, maximum unlimited for color stop. And where color stop just means color and uh, length percentage. Length percentage optional. So, so yeah, a bit, the syntax is a bit complicated. But first of all, let's understand that gradients can be used in any property that accepts images. So background, you can use background image. So you can use linear gradient. You can put it on background or you can uh, be a bit more specific, put on background image. Uh, list style also can, can use 
gradients if, if you want to like make a bit more fancy uh, list out. So the first argument specifies the gradient line. Uh, gradient line means like the angle. So now I'm talking about linear gradient only. It talks about the angle of the gradient. So if you don't do anything because question mark says it's optional, so actually you don't, you don't have the angle also can, it'll default to to bottom. So to bottom is this direction. Eh, no, 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 it's like wait, to bottom, okay, yeah, this direction. Yeah, yeah, English. Um, but of course you can, you can use angle, so you can use degrees. I think radian, radian is a legit um, CSS value you can use uh, for angles. Or you can use these uh, keywords, so there is to top, to left, to right, to bottom, English. Color stop list is made out of a color and uh, a length percentage. Uh, you can use fixed lengths, but ideally try to use percentage because if your, your div changes, sh uh, if it's responsive and changes and your, your color stop, the, the, the position where it stops is fixed, right? Your, your gradient might go off. So percentage is a safer bet. So then you need at least two values for a linear gradient because if you have only one value, then it's not a gradient, it's a solid color, right? So between two color stops, uh, the line is linearly interpolated. So what you can do is, life example, if you don't do anything, so this is the most simplest code. It's just linear gradient orange green, huh? this color orange, this color green. The browser will automatically sort of make a smooth interpolation from top to bottom. Uh, to bottom is the default direction. So this is the simplest way to do a gradient because you don't, you, you don't define the color stop. So if you want a more complicated gradient, for example, maybe I want more green, then I might, might, I might want to define a color stop value for, for say orange, I could say like orange 10%. So then orange 10%, orange then it will, start it will start greening a bit earlier. So that's how it works. If you, and we, because of this uh, behavior, right, we can use gradients to actually do like solid color. So in a, in a way, if you only have one div to play with and you wanted to do like stripes of different colors, right, you can hack on the gradient property. So if you want to do a clean color stop, you just need to have the color stop at the same value. So if you want a clean stop, right, I think I wrote some words about this, go back. <laughs> For a clean change between two colors, have two color stops at the same position. So if you want a clean stop for two colors, you need at least four values. So you are saying orange to orange 50% is one color, and then green starts at exactly the same position, and green to N is the same. So that's how you get a clean color. So if I want another color in between, I'll add another two, Two, uh, not, not two values, depending on where. So if you remember the first two album covers, they were like stripes across the circle. It's the gradient, it's a gradient trick. Yeah, it's, it's just only one div, but gradient defied. Hashtag what is English. Another trick you can use is box shadow. So you can actually do multiple box shadows. The most normal use of box shadow is, uh, I don't do it here, but like you sort of, you know, make your buttons look a bit more fancy, like 3D effect, got shadow at the bottom, that kind of thing. Yeah, very normal, there's like single box shadow. But you can have like multiple box shadows. And the value, the syntax for box shadow, nobody can remember. Okay, maybe you can remember, I cannot remember. But there are four values I just can't, I cannot remember which does what. So can always refer one because Google is your friend, yo. So the first value is horizontal offset, means you, you can shift the shadow along this axis, and then there's vertical offset is the second value. Third value is blur radius. Uh, blur radius determines how big the box shadow is. And then the spread radius, if you have it, it will blur out instead of being a solid uh, color. Oh, sorry, it's five values. Last one is color. So actually, your box, uh, your box shadow can be like a, a different color. So this was the logo on each of the, I think not all of them had, three of them had this like set of dots. But all the dots are the same. So instead of wasting like, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, instead of wasting 11 divs, right, you just use one, div and then box shadow the rest of it. So the, if the 
particular piece of art you're looking at has this sort of repeat pattern, right? Don't waste this, just use box shadow. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot make the box shadow be different. So it's a, it's a shadow, ma, so it has to replicate exactly the same. But if you want, if, if your shapes are the same and they just need to be positioned differently, can consider using box shadow. Oh, flex box turn itself back on. Hang on, guys. Yeah, it's like, oh, the sun just set. Is this a hint? Someone is telling me something. Who thinks speak faster? Until sunrise. Yeah. yeah. So for this particular uh, scenario, the shape is a circle. This one by one px by one px doesn't really mean anything because the shape, right, of the box shadow is determined here. This is just to have. This is to just to make sure that my element is rendered. So there's a there's a minimum. I think, if I'm not wrong, I think it's this one. Cannot be sure lah. Because this actually, what we see is the entire box shadow. Because the one by one, right, is, is, almost non, is almost not visible. So, horizontal offset, vertical offset. Uh, for the, what's this ah? Blur, blur radius. Blur radius zero because I wanted it solid. If I set something here, right, it would, it would diffuse, it would be soft, then it wouldn't get this effect. But if the effect that you're looking for is soft, then you pro this, this value won't be zero. Uh, then 0 0.5 is the spread radius, so that's the, the size of my circle. So if I make this, it'll be a bigger circle. And then the last one is color. So this is not black, this is like some brownish weird color. So, I don't know, 11? 11 values. So this, if, if you need to do a repeat pattern, can try using box shadow. So I think that's about it. Oh, it's still got, uh, can transform. Uh, Transforms can do a lot of things. Transform is like Photoshop in your browser. So you can rotate, you can scale, you can skew, you can translate. Very nice. Key thing to note is that it does not work on inline elements. So if you try to do transform, then like transform left, right, center, also no change, right? Check, check. Is it display block or not? Because if it's display inline, ah, cannot, cannot. Must, must set to at least display block. Uh, so transforms are cumulative and operate from their transform origin. Transform origin, because you're, trans, you're transform, right, you're changing the shape of the element. And this transform is applied. The what the browser does is that it will read through your HTML and then apply all the styles, calculate all the position, everything nicely already. Transforms come after. So when you transform something, for example, let's say I'm going to, actually, do I have example? I never, never mind. I just ver verbalize the example. So imagine, let's say you have a, I have a, I have a square at the top, right? Imagine the square is edge to edge. Ah. If I transform, if I rotate it, it becomes a, a diamond shape. But because the transform origin default is 50-50, means all the transforms will start from the middle of the element. So if I, if I rotate a square, okay, I must put this cushion down, unfortunately. Branding your hook, ah, hook. So if I rotate along the 50%, right, it's going to go out. Because the browser itself doesn't, doesn't re-render the position, it won't like shift it down. It will just treat it like that. So this will actually get go up. That's that's what that's what and th this is what I mean by transform origin 50-50, and this is what I mean by uh, the transforms happen after everything is rendered. But uh, if you are aware of that, then you won't be surprised if right like, if you especially if you scale or, or rotate things that like you might you might overlap or underlap things. So that's just something to to take note of. You may have to adjust the surrounding elements. Uh, if you're using uh, transforms, you can 2D, you can 3D. Uh, another thing to note is, if you're new to transform, is that they are cumulative. So if you want like multiple transforms, right? Don't do that. Don't 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 do separate ones because cascade CSS ah, cascade ah, you only recognize the last one. These two gonna override. So if you had to cumulate, you had to translate, you have to scale, and you have to rotate, right? Put all into the same. Pull into the same line. Yeah. Uh, no need. No need comma. Ah. Just separate the function can now. Ah, like that. So, yeah, transforms. So, with that, that is actually all the things. If you uh, con combine and permute and combine all these uh, techniques that I, I discussed, you should be able to do a lot of interesting things. So, there are a lot of useful links and resources all about drawings with CSS. La, Pure CSS images la, how to animate la, 
there's a point to this. Because next month I want to run code pen meetup, so I need you all to like show and tell. So I'm like sh showing you all how to do it first in the hopes, in the hopes that at least 20% of you attempt. Like you even if you want to come and then you show me a okay, you don't come then you show me a circle. Lah. If you come and then you, you show me a circle which is a bit fancier than just a normal circle, can we be the bar oh, very low one? Talk CSS is not some Atas conference, guys. So more effort than a solid block of cover uh, color, please come and do the code pen show and tell. You know, because I think um after they send us free swag, we also must help them social media the things, right? So you cannot come and show me a circle, lah. Then also very hard, lah. Then next time, like, don't want to cheat yourself anymore, okay? Effort, okay? Minimum, but still need a bit of effort. Like, our bar is here. So you, at least you still need to step over the bar, right? Ah, so, so yeah. I will share this. I will share Ted's stuff. Um, so that's that. Thank you.